All right, fastest 15 minutes on the internet, fastest 15 minutes in social media. My name is Judson Powell. I'm Judson Powell now without the beard. <laughs> no, I had to, I had to shave the beard. I don't, was, plus I, I usually do that around this time of the year anyway. Plus, um, thanks to my wife, my wife keeps telling me how old I look and it's all right. You know, I ain't mad at her. Um, anyway, um, so let me talk about uh, let me talk about Kwame Brown some more. Let me talk about some of the implications, uh, just of some of the stuff that he's saying, and, and that the fact that uh, the matter is is that um, is that he he actually you know he actually is waking people up to what the real deal is. And some of these people, you know, Stephen Jackson and and uh, and Charlemagne the God and some other people have actually apologized to him. Uh, because, you know, once they, once they figured out that what he was saying was true, then it was like a whole, it was like a whole new ball game. So I think that, um, I think that, that everybody should understand the, you know, it's more than just beef. It's more than just, you know, talking back and forth. And that's what I like about the situation because usually when stuff like this is going on, I, I don't say anything because I, you know, I just sit back and watch. But I think that in this situation, that is really important that we understand exactly what's going on. And what is actually going on is the fact of, um, is that Kwame Brown has exposed the system, the, the, the sports and entertainment system and all that kind of stuff, because what they don't realize is, and, and you know, this is stuff that I've, that I've long time, long time ago started talking about is the fact that, you know, if you don't have anything that you can offer them, then they vilify you and they get rid of you. They, they want to, you know, they talk bad about you or whatever. And I believe a lot of that, even, even in the, in the Bill Cosby situation and a lot of situations, you know, they didn't want to make that, that man rich. You realize like even before, before he was convicted of a crime, they had already taken off every single show that he had ever created in his life. And, and we all know that there are, that there are people out there that have done stuff, you know, they didn't do the same thing to, uh, to uh, what's his name? Um, uh, I can't think of the guy, the, the white guy. But you know, it's it's funny how they didn't do nothing. Weinstein. That's what I was thinking about. That's what I'm trying to bring to my mind. But um, you know, he didn't get the same. They didn't take all those all the movies that they you know that 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 they created and all that and remove them from you know from being able to make money and all of that. They didn't do that. And and so if we talk about a you know and and they let him pay his way out of of whatever it was you know basically he he you know he gave up some of the some of the mil hundreds of millions of dollars you know he made he had a hundred hundreds of millions of dollars and they made him give up what a, a, just a little pittance of of the money that he made uh, over the course of of the time that he's been making uh, motion pictures. But what I'm trying to say is, is like, it's, it's different. Everything is different for us. It's different. You know, we have to, we have to live up to a different standard. And I don't think that there's, you know, one of the things, and, and I'm not discounting and don't, you know, don't, don't write me or inbox me or DM me or none of that stuff. Cause you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to care, but unless, unless it's like a, a significant point. But the, the thing is, is that, you know, that's the, the casting couch. Why do you think there's even such thing as the casting couch? Why do you think that, that there's that, 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 that terminology exists? Why do you think that terminology even exists? Why does it exist? It exists because the, it has always gone on in Hollywood, you know, and, and there, there, you know, there's a lot of people out there uh, who can attest to it. And sometimes, and, and Hey, even some actors and actresses, you know, they, they make it a point to sleep with producers and sleep with directors and sleep with other actors and all that kind of stuff. That's their, you know, that's the way they, they feel comfortable, uh, in, in, in dealing with the situation in Hollywood. But we got to understand that, you know, that, that, you know, Bill Cosby is like 90 years old almost now. And, you know, you put him in jail for 10 years at the end of his life and all the great things, you know, sometimes people do so much great stuff that, that even if they did do something. And then the other thing is, like I said, why, you know, you, you go back and pull up stuff that happens in the seventies and the eighties and all that kind of stuff and get all these people, these, you know, if you were so traumatized, why didn't you bring charges back then? That's all I'm saying. You know, it took you, so it took, you mean to tell me it took you 50 years 
to come out, you know, to come out and say what it would happen. And then, you know, you have the, you know, you, it's, it's just a smear campaign. But, but you know, I don't want to talk about, I, that's not what I want to talk about. But what I, what I really want to get y'all to open your eyes to, to wake up to and to become woke to is the fact of Kwame Brown, okay, was drafted, right? Was drafted so he could be traded for Elton Brand. And if they thought that he wasn't a good player, he would have never been drafted first. You know, the, and he was the youngest player ever to be drafted number one. He was a kid. You know, he was a young kid. And then, of course, and then they made him the poster child, of course, for the one and done rule. So they had to they had to vilify him so that they could so that they could start their de developmental league. So he was the he was the scapegoat so that the NBA could keep kids from going straight to the pros. Because a lot of those kids, what we don't realize is a lot of those kids were bust. And, you know, and, and, it, and it was just because what they weren't mature enough. And they, you know, they hadn't had they didn't have anybody uh, in their corner to tell them what was going on. And so, you know, that was and that was the eye opener. And the fact that then they get ex players and ex, you know, people that were in the league. And, you know, all these ex players are running around talking about this man 20 years later. Leave the man alone. Uh, and I really believe, you know, that was the thing. It is like, leave the man alone. It's like, okay, 20 years, 20 years later. And then all of a sudden y'all got stuff to say and stuff to talk about. And, and this, that, and the other thing is, 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 is utterly ridiculous. And I think that, uh, you know, we all need to, we all need to wake up you know, to what really goes on. The same thing happens in the entertainment business. Just like right now, everybody thinks, you know, it's like, it's like, and I was talking to my, to my, um, to my young son about this. And I'm like, you know, what is the deal? You know, the, the whole thing now to be, to be successful as a rapper, uh, you have to, you know, you have either have to shoot somebody, you have to get shot. I mean, these kids, literally these kids in the rap game are killing each other. They're starting beef where they, they're literally killing each other or having each other killed and, and all this kind of stuff. Every time you every time you open up the the you know the, the news, you see that there is some, you know, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Pop Smoke. Now, I, you know, I never heard a, a song by this guy or nothing like that. But but that's what people think that it's all about. You know, that's what pe that's what young people think that it's all about. And then we got our women. You know, he also touched on that. The fact of the matter is that, you know, you they're they're selling this whole facade to us. That's a lie. You ain't got to you know why you ain't got to be tough. You ain't no tough guy. So then what happens? You kill a person, then you you might as well say you kill. And, and, you know, we talk about this all the time. You might as well say you killed two people. Why? Because the, the person that got murdered is dead and the person that murdered them is going to jail for life or to the or to the you know to the electric chair depending on where you are and what state you're in so we got to you know those are those are things that you got to you got to really think about and and our kids are literally locked up into this the same you know that's what you know and it's a spirit it's an evil spirit even the whole thing you know everybody doesn't realize and I'm and I'm going to go comedic on y'all but y'all don't realize half of this stuff is spiritual these are spells that have been placed upon our people, um, you know, for, for, for 400 years. And that's why it's hard to break. Did you know, go, go, go check out the papyrus or the hieroglyphs or anything like that. Get the, the Egyptian book of the dead. There's nothing in there about murdering people and all of this kind of stuff, because that wasn't, a, that, that's not our, that's not our purview. That's not what we did. That's not what we do. That's not what we should do, you know. So if you got if you got to kill somebody or join a gang and you know all that stuff, and the reason why they put this stuff in front of you, why do you think they put all this stuff in front of you? Why do you think they put Biggie and Tupac and Nipsey Hussle and Ice Cube? You know, I know Ice Cube's still alive, but Ice Cube and Snoop Dogg and all these people. Why do you think those people are the ones that are selling the products, pushing the products and all that kind of stuff? And the reason why is because they don't want you to see a black doctor or a black lawyer or a black inventor or a black engineer or a black accountant. They don't want you to see those people. 
they don't want you to see those people because then your dream might end up differently. But if I can get you to, to aspire to thug life and to be a thug and to be hard and all that, that's the same thing that, that we got Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B are doing. You know, they're over-sexualizing it. There's no reason, that, you know, strip clubs and making it rain and, and popping bottles and all of that kind of stuff. That's the, that's the, the thing that our kids aspire to and y'all know i'm telling the truth i'm not lying in, on anybody and i'm not being a hater or anything like that but people are dying because of this they're dying because of of the culture and they're dying because of what they think they have to do in order to be successful we're not telling them you know i i remember i remember when i first got to hampton university and and we were having this uh this this thing and they were talking about and they were like you know you have you know, there, there are only so many jobs in the NFL and so many jobs in Major League Baseball and so many jobs, you know, in, in basketball or whatever. And and your chances of getting those jobs are, are slim and none. Right. And then and, and because and, and the other thing is, and as you saw that they didn't draft not one black guy from a HBCU in the in the NFL draft this year. You know, not not one. So, you know, so so tell me what's up. You know, so, so, you know, and that's and that's because they it's it's another form of of systemic racism and what else, and 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 white nationalism. You know, and the and the NFL is about as racist as it comes, about as racist as it comes. And as long as you you know, and and and, and they don't want you to be able to do anything outside of, of what they trying to tell you to do or what they or what they think you should do. So I'm trying to I'm trying to tell y'all, look, wake up. And and they tried to vilify Kwame Brown so that they could so that they could get their developmental lead. So now you know you can't you can't go. You have to do at least one and done. So you gotta go to you gotta go to college for one year um in order to go into the league. And so what do they do? They go and they say, well, this guy, he came out as a, you know, as a, as a freshman and he was a, he was a, you know, I mean, not a freshman, but he came out uh, straight out of high school and he was a bust. And, and they still talking about he was a bust 20 years later. Why? So that they could keep the developmental league going. So that they could keep all that stuff going. Why? So they can get more money off of the players. Because I don't have to pay you. I, I can send you to D league. And I don't have to pay you. And then when you come from D League, I can say, well, you know, uh, you weren't a first, you know, you weren't a first round draft choice, so nothing like that. So we can only pay you so much money. And the other thing that he talked about here, I'm, I'm gonna touch on this right quick because I got about two minutes left. Look, he was talking about um, um, Mr. Ball, you know, the two, the two. Um, oh, I can never think of their names. Anyway, the Ball brothers that are in the NBA, and they keep vilifying their daddy why they daddy made them successful you know and you should talk like that about your kid if you're not if you're not taking care of your kid and talk about your kid like that then you what kind of father are you you know i want i want all my children to be successful you know i think i i think i you know i pray that uh significantly over the course of all their lives that i want the best for them and all that and, and, you know, so you look at people like Tiger Woods and like Serena Williams and, and you know, all these uh, uh, other athletes whose, whose parents, uh, you know, paid out money and went to all the games and sat there and did all this and did that so that they could be successful. But Kwame Brown said, hey, look, I was a kid that had no shoes on his feet, no food in his mouth, you know, and at 18 years old. I was able to move my mother to the golf course. <laughs> and that's what they don't want you to know. That's what they don't want you to know. They do not want you to know. They want you to stay. They want you to stay dazed and confused. So don't be dazed and confused. Wake up, y'all. And, and then, like I said, and once again, do not forget that all of this stuff is ritualistic and spiritual. You got to you got to understand your you got to understand yourself. 
And that's one thing that I love about Kwame Brown because he understands himself. He understands what? His mama's cooking. <laughs> I love it. Thank, thank you, Kwame Brown. Fastest 15 minutes is up. In fact, I went over a little bit. Love you.